The functions of the body to survive can be broken down to two basic functions for any organism to survive. You have to be able to grow, maintain yourself, take care of your biology, but you also must be able to protect yourself so that if you're just growing and you can't protect yourself, you'll become food for something else. So the uh, survival involves a balance between growth and protection. Through the history of human civilization and through a human evolution, we recognize that our nature is to be in a state of growth and that our protection is only supposed to be used to you know, help us out of that, that threatening moment. You can't be in growth and in protection at the same time. So the significance is when we see a need of protection, the stress hormones in the body shut off the blood vessels in our viscera or gut, which is the part of the body for growth. Well, the issue is if you took the blood from the viscera and moved it out to the arms, then you left no blood in the viscera. That means no growth, but you're ready to fight. And when your fighting is finished, then the blood returns back to the viscera and you grow again. But in the world that we live in today, it's 24-7 fear. So we have a continuous dripping of that stress hormone into the body. It's just dripping all the time, getting us ready to run or fight or flight at any moment at the drop of a hat. We're ready to go because we're on guard. Well, the problem is, what does that mean about your allocation of energy? And it says, we're spending most of our energy in protection. You cannot survive if you're in protection all the time. And if the parasite can control the nature of the fear, it can then create a fear among us that only it can defend us against. A recent physical manifestation of this comes from Zbigniew Brzezinski, former Secretary of State who also supported President Barack Obama. In his book, The Grand Chessboard, he states, as America becomes an increasingly multicultural society, it may find it more difficult to fashion a consensus of foreign policy issues except in the circumstance of a truly massive and widely perceived direct external threat. Even the Reich Fuhrer of the Nazi party, Hermann Göring, sums up this game of supply and demand perfectly when he stated the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the peacemakers for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same in any country. It also works the same in every individual psyche. Just remember that the false ego has only one desire, to become greater and more powerful than the true self. This illness causes us to believe that we are separate from nature. This is why we see such a rise in the dependency of technology. This is why we see such little stewardship for the earth and the environment. And this is why we see bigotry, racism, sexism, and every other form of discrimination possible that leads to crime, violence, wars, and eventually, the global destruction of the organism. This endless state of fear, confusion, and segregation our world seems to live in is a symptom of the false ego creating a false threat.